Machine translation is kind of old at this point. For almost a decade, every one of us is carrying a device in our pocket that can do a halfway decent job of translating, say, a Spanish menu into English. Given the success, you might think that the task is pretty easy. We have dictionaries, just look up a word, write down the translation, call it a day. Is translation really that hard? In the 50s, there was a famous demo at Georgetown University of machine translation from Russian into English that kind of worked. Afterward, you had interviews like this. What really worries me today is what's going to happen to us if machines can think. And what interests me specifically is can they? Well, that's a very hard question to answer. If you'd asked me that question just a few years ago, I'd have said it was very far-fetched. And today, I just have to admit, I don't really know. I suspect if you come back in four or five years, I'll say, sure, they really do think. It's been a couple more than five years since this interview. And he's not all that different from the AI boosters that we see today. He just needs to swap his suit for a hoodie and he'd fit right in at OpenAI. Now don't get me wrong, we've made a lot of advances in machine translation in the last 70 years. The methods are better and the results are better. But before I talk about how machine translation works, I just want to impress on you that translation can be really hard. And we were a long way from perfect translation then, and we're still a long way from perfect translation now. While there's a lot of patterns that you can memorize, and computers are really good at finding patterns and memorizing them, the hardest examples of translation require real, at this point, human experts to actually do a good job. Let's take an example from this Atlantic article from Indiana University professor Douglas Hofstetter. He looked at this passage from a memoir from Yang Jiang, herself a famous translator of Don Quixote. In this passage, she's talking about her husband, Tian Zhongshu. What happens if you put this into Google Translate? Now, I'm not picking on Google Translate. I still have a lot of friends at Google, and Google Translate usually does a pretty good job. but. Some weird stuff is happening here. First, Zhongshu's name doesn't appear here. That's funny. Part of the reason might be that part of his name, Shu, also means book. So you get funny sentences like the book of the fear in the book said to me. There are also obvious logical inconsistencies, like whether he's a grad student or not. He's not. You can check out Hofstetter's full article for more of the takedown. But let's focus on this last sentence here. Here again is a Google Translate rendition. Hofstetter creates his own version of it. This still doesn't make sense to me. What's Southern about what he's doing? In a language log post, Victor Mayer digs a little bit deeper to uncover that the third Qing emperor created a literary advisory council, which is a historical illusion better explained in the final translation here. And there are other tons of properties that you might want to pay attention to. Douglas Hofstetter has a wonderful book about this, mostly focusing on a single poem. Because part of the challenge is rhythm. I'll let Douglas Hofstetter recite a bit of it for us. Ma mignonne, je vous donne le bonjour. Le séjour c'est prison. Guérison recouvrée, puis ouvrez votre porte et qu'on sorte vitement, car Clément le vous mande. If you want to exactly capture the structure of the poem in a translation, you should keep it at 28 lines, with each line having three syllables, stress the last syllable of that line, and make sure every pair of lines rhyme. Start the poem formal, end it informally, make sure that the first line matches the last line, and work in Clement, the name of the author, in here somewhere. It's hard to capture all of this at once and preserve the exact meaning of the text. The words that rhyme in French won't rhyme in English. Thou probably does not use the formal, informal, second person in English all that much, and, and so on. But here are some translations that come close. Getting the rhymes, the number of lines, and even mentioning Clément, even though not finding a good rhyme for it, uh, like Vitremont. And if you want to read more about this, do check out Le Tombeau des Marauds. But just to give you a flavor, the line Et perdra les bons ponts, which means lose weight, is translated as you will seed pounds you need. Just really beautiful, captures the meaning, has three syllables, has the stress on the last syllable, rhymes, and retains the playful tone of the original poem. And if you don't like any of my French pronunciations, please let me know in the comments. It boosts engagement. So this is a poem, but 
The problem gets even harder if you're trying to translate a song. For example, in tonal languages like Mandarin, if the pitch of the word tong doesn't match the underlying music, people might not understand it. They might hear tong, fourth falling tone instead. But the biggest problem, in my opinion, is trying to get the same reaction from an audience. It's one thing to convey the meaning, but it's quite another to say, have a joke land in another language. It's even more impressive when that joke involves wordplay. Here's my favorite example from The Simpsons. Hello? Uh, yeah, Mrs. Simpson, I have some bad news. Your husband was found DOA. Oh my god, he's dead? Oh wait, I mean DWI. <laughs> I always get those two mixed up. My name is Mrs. Phillips. You said my husband is DWI? Uh, why don't you talk to that officer over there? I'm going out to lunch. So to talk about this, let's explain the joke. Wiggum is confusing DUI, driving under the influence, with DOA, dead on arrival. For example, a car crashed into a chestnut tree and the paramedics couldn't help. So how do you translate into German so that this is still funny? The important thing is that Wiggum is confusing something that means somebody had too many beers with something fatal, and they need to be confusable. So in the translation, they use ertrunken and betrunken. Ja, tut mir leid, Miss Simpson, aber ihr Mann wird ertrunken gefunden. Was? Er ist tot? Ach nee, ich meinte natürlich, er wird für betrunken gefunden. So even though the exact meaning isn't conveyed, the more important point is that the joke still works. And this is one of the big jobs of a translator to know what constraints are important and which might be optional. So to recap, if we want machines to do perfect machine translations, they need to be able to completely encode the meaning of a source sentence, match it up with sheet music, catch any 17th century references to the Kangxi Emperor, rhyme, count syllables, figure out where the stress is when someone will read it out loud, know when something is funny, know when you don't have to translate perfectly, and know when you have to explain an obscure reference, and then render everything perfectly in the target language. Piece of cake. So if you use the miraculous device in your pocket that can often produce adequate output that helps you fumble your way through ordering quattro tacos, por favor, don't let the skill of professional translators and the depth and breadth of this problem get lost in translation. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching if you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.